Hey guys, welcome back to Mainville ATV and Outdoors where we do all things all terrain. Today we have some absolutely brand new 2024 Heisen machines. On my right, you're gonna see the MP9T550 and on my left, you're going to see the MP9550R. We're gonna be diving into these machines. We're gonna have all sorts of sweet shots. We're gonna do a walk around, give you our first impressions. If you're looking for the drone shots, however, they're in that river over there. We'll explain later. <laughs> Okay, so what we have here first is the T550. We're gonna kind of do a lap, show you what's going on with it. As you see it is how you get it. There's no additions from here or anything like that. You don't have to buy a winch and put it on it. This is how it's gonna come. So you're looking at the 50 inch trail model. The benefit to that obviously is if you're planning on going into tight spaces or where maybe an ATV would go. Most ATVs are somewhere in that 40 to 50 inch range as well. So you can get anywhere most of those are gonna go. And in some places, 50 inches is actually the regulation. So you'll find a lot of uh, provinces and states or different trail systems might require a 50 or 65 inch width. So both these machines are gonna fit those needs. So that's pretty cool. Up front, we have a 3,500 pound winch and we have the front hitch receiver. That's actually great. So if you're maneuvering some trailers around the yard or whatever, this could actually be really cool. Um, that's handy right there. You have front A-arm suspension, and interestingly enough, in the back you have trailing arms. We're gonna to touch a bit more on that later. But you're gonna see a dump box. Underneath the hood, you have your coolant reservoir and some fuses. Otherwise, there's like a little bit of storage if you wanna put some gloves or something like that. On the side, we have small doors. These are intended to just keep your legs in for the most part, so it's more of a safety thing. You're gonna see the same thing with the bars here. That's intended to keep you in. Obviously, you have seat belts and the rest. On the inside, you have a pretty decent dash. You're gonna see some extra slots for switches. You're gonna see the windshield that comes with the machine as well as the mirrors. You have your e-brake. It's kind of like that old Toyota style e-brake. You guys know what I mean. On the dash, you're gonna find your high-low, four-wheel drive, two-wheel drive, of course. It does have a front locker and it even has signals. You're gonna see a horn here. Obviously, it doesn't work unless the power's on. You're gonna see some storage. Otherwise, you're not gonna have any adjustability in your seat which is kind of a drawback, especially for these utility machines. It's pretty popular to not have any seat adjustment. And if you do, it's very little. So there's none in this machine. And Cass and I, when we were riding these earlier, the one thing that we always find with these utility machines is because of the seating position, this one's not as bad as the, uh, the 550R, but you end up kind of stepping on the pedal up and down instead of having a more relaxed feel. So what you'll find is going down the trail for a long time, that tends to be a negative because you feel like you're holding your your foot up all the time so your ankle can get pretty sore, but it's really not that big of a deal. And most people who are buying these aren't doing long trail rides or anything like that. Of course you can and you'll be fine, but it is something to consider. I find it to be a bit of a drawback. Custom cup holders and things like that, but otherwise fairly simple. Obviously we have a roof. These are all pretty cool features to get right off the bat, especially for the MSRP that they come at. Um, as far as pricing and stuff, we're gonna have that linked down below. So we'll touch more on that, uh, more in the description and we're gonna link to information where you can go see all that stuff. Cause I don't like to talk prices on video, especially if someone finds this video six years from now. <laughs> so that's why I don't do that. On the back here, you're gonna see the box. The one thing we noticed is the tilt. Obviously will function to get soil out or whatever you're doing, but as far as accessing your engine, doesn't provide a whole lot of value. But at the end of the day, to remove this box, if you're doing any servicing or whatever, really not that hard. They have incredible gas struts. That or I need to hit the gym, I'm not sure which. You do have a little tailgate here, but the keen of you are probably gonna see that something weird is going on. You'll notice that if you were trying to dump stuff out of here or material, again, not that big of a deal, but it is kind of odd that there's this extra material here. Like why didn't the whole tailgate come down? I know that they incorporated the, uh, the lights and everything into it, but ultimately there's an extra piece here that doesn't quite make sense. But otherwise it will of course do the job and we're kind of just nitpicking. At the back, you're gonna see obviously the rear hitch receiver, a bumper, and you're gonna see something really interesting. These are the trailing arms. I'm not sure why they went with a trailing arm design on a utility machine. That's something you'll typically see on like more of a sport machine. I'm not sure what their thought process is on that one, but it'll be interesting to see how that works in the long run and what the benefits really are. I find trailing arms tend to get hung up in the rocks and stuff like that, 
but they're great for suspension travel and things like that. So I'll let you guys theorize down below why they did that, but ultimately kind of cool to see. I'm interested, so that'll be sweet. That's basically the trail in a nutshell. My understanding is there's going to be plenty that you can add on to this machine from Heisen directly. I know there's going to be like rock sliders and a few other things, but I can't speak on too many because it's just so early. We don't actually know all the stuff. We just know that they have a lot coming out. So what we have here is the 550R. So the MP9 550R. So the trail model has a 400 and a 550. So that's the trail model. And on this one, you're going to have a 550 750. So this is at a 60 inch width and it is intended to be the, the big brother of the two, let's say. But of course that 60 inch width, that's up to you. That could be a downfall or it could be exactly what you're looking for. You're obviously gonna get more stability, but you're gonna have a harder time sneaking through some stuff. On the front, you're gonna see the exact same width, 3,500, but you're gonna lose the uh, front hitch receiver. So that's not there. You're also gonna see the biggest change between the two and that is a full cab. This one being so early doesn't have every single piece of it. You're gonna notice it doesn't have the top of the doors and it doesn't have the rear glass, but this is intended to be a full cab model and you can get heat and everything for it as well. You're gonna see the mirrors are slightly different with this one, but that's just because of the, uh, the design. I'm gonna show you the cutest hood you've ever seen. You ready for this? <laughs> I love that it popped up like that. When Josh did this, I laughed, it's so cute. So you're gonna see your air box, coolant, stuff like that, but otherwise, there's not a whole lot of room. You might be able to jam some gloves or whatever you're looking for in there. But uh, this is the most adorable hood I've ever seen. But, you know, pretty cool to have access to that kind of thing. Huh, look at that. We'll do the inside last. But you're gonna see the same thing with the box. It doesn't give you a ton of room, but its intended purpose is to dump whatever you have going on back there. As far as tires go, you have a unsquare setup. So you have, uh, I think there are 11 wides in the rear, nine in the front, but you do go up to a 27 inch tall and you're gonna see a different tire there from Heisen. In the back, you're gonna see the same issue with the other one. I don't really care for what's going on here or why they decided to do this because of course, if you're dumping stuff, you're gonna have material that gets stuck back here, but it's not that big of a deal to reach in and do that. So we'll see if they do something with that in the future, but ultimately, like I said, not that big of a deal. In the back, you have a bumper. All of this, again, comes as, as is. You're gonna see the trailing arms again, but of course this one is at the 60 inch width. I'm curious how those trailing arms are gonna perform or what their intended purpose is, why they just decided to do that. I've never seen trailing arms on a utility machine, so gonna be curious. You have your hitch receiver in the rear, and that's basically covering the entire outside. So I'll have Cass kind of peek over here and I'll hop in and show you what's going on. So on the inside, one of the biggest things you're gonna see is obviously you have a little bit more room, cab's a little bit more spacious. You do have your roof, you will have glass, you will have side doors complete, everything like that. We did discuss heat options, they do have them, they will have them. The storage everywhere, is as you'd expect, there's tons. You're gonna to be able to put whatever you're looking to put in there. Same signal kit, same front locking diff, the horn, the whole thing. Ultimately, simple, but I mean, that's exactly what people are looking for these days, I find. There's no need to overcomplicate these machines. I'm just happy to see more competition and more options in the space. I personally found, in this one in particular, the way you sit in these, of course, on purpose is to be able to slide into this let's say you have all your hunting gear or construction equipment or whatever and you come in here and that's this is the purpose of this to be sitting up you can see over everything lots of visibility it's just like a mini truck the downfall to that i find is the way you step on your pedal i find you're holding your foot up quite a bit because you can't put your seat back there's no adjustability in the seat so if you're any bigger than me i'm five foot nine on a good day and I'm already feeling that that is gonna be an issue for me. Let's say I'm doing long trail rides or whatever. If you're six foot or above that, I, I'm positive that you're gonna run into a bit of an ankle pains when it comes to this. But that's a lot of utility machines I find. So something to consider. Again, very minor, but you know, it is there. So how did you find just riding this around? Honestly, it was fun. I like the size of it. If anybody's watched our channel for some time, you remember me being on the Kodiak, and I'm always a fan of nice and small uh, machines, so this definitely uh, hit that mark for me. I'm five foot four, Kyle would argue five foot three and a half, 
but I'm quite comfortable reaching the pedal even though the seat lacks some adjustability. Uh, that's fine. The other piece that's nice is obviously the power steering and that it comes included with all the models that we've talked about. Not sure why some brands don't include that as a standard feature now, but uh, it's nice to see Heisen doing that for sure. Otherwise, uh, I took it a little bit more for a spirited ride when I wasn't following Kyle and uh, she's fun. I liked it. Okay guys, so that's a first impression of these two machines. So we have the MP9T 550. 550. I finally got that right. I keep saying 550T. Yeah. And then of course we have the MP9 550R. Mm -hmm. So for the trail version, you are going to see a 400 and a 550. And then when you come over to the 60 inch version with this cab setup, you're gonna have a 550, 750, and I'm hoping, they didn't confirm this, I'm hoping they do a 1000 one day. Mm -hmm. Of course, we can't say this is a proper review. We don't have hundreds of kilometers on these machines and that much time. We had a chance to try it out on this private property, kind of flex it out a little bit, see how the clutching engaged. It all felt really good. Mm -hmm. Felt really great out of the box, actually. Yeah. So yeah. pretty impressed with that. I had a really good time with this machine. I mm -hmm. think it's really important to acknowledge that more options, the better. Yeah. Right? Yeah. It provides not only options for people, the consumer, the most important part, but it also makes it more competitive out there, pushes mm -hmm. a little bit of innovation, that kind of thing. Yeah. So I'm Absolutely. happy to see that. A uh, few little details. Yeah. I think there's clutching. Yeah, right? CV Tech comes standard in all of the models that we've discussed today, as well as a bumper to bumper warranty for two years. And when they say bumper to bumper, it is bumper Truly to Truly bumper. bumper to bumper, yeah. Yeah, we saw a unit torn down at the dealership and- uh, Quite literally bumper to quite, bumper. Yeah, yeah. quite, yeah. <laughs> so uh, they'll, they'll take care of you in that, in that regard. So these are literally the first units mm -hmm. in Canada, some of the first in North America. So this is very, very early look at some mm -hmm. of these Heisen units. I'm excited to see what they do in the future. I've heard that they have a lot of plans. We can't yeah. quite confirm those right now, but <laughs> you will see more of that soon. If you have any questions, leave them down below. Of course, you're not gonna beat the experts. So if you have real, real questions mm -hmm. that you're interested in, make sure to ask Rito Lakes Power Sports. All of that info is gonna be left in the description for you guys. A big thank you to them for inviting us out to take a look yeah. at these machines. And uh, I guess now we'll go and see if we can get my drone out of the water. Yeah, I'll be a little bit less dry next time you see me. <laughs> <laughs> All right, see you guys. <laughs> Bleep. <laughs> All right, Cass, do you wanna give us a tour of the T550? Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> like so. HGTV or something, oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Cass, do you want to give us a tour of this machine? Sure, why not? <laughs> <laughs> it's like I'm holding you hostage. All right, Cass, do you want to give us a tour of the tight? Cheap. Oh, wow. <laughs> no, 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 no. All right. Okay. <laughs> okay, Kyle, do you want to give us a quick tour of the. Oh, you started? Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh wait. No. Yes. Where was I going with that? The e brake? <laughs> I'm gonna delete this. So the drone is currently in the middle of a river right now. The odds of us finding it, I'm gonna go with like a solid 10%. <laughs> so there's a $2,200 brick in the water right now. Yikes. So best case scenario, we find it and it's cheaper to repair than to replace. And there's another chance that we actually get the footage we're looking for. So we're not gonna invest an insane amount of time, but we're gonna look. But also, it's the responsible thing to do oh, yeah. because of lithium batteries <laughs> and microplastic pollution uh -huh. and wildlife. Don't it's, mix. It's no worse than the Smith Falls sewage going into the river right there. That's fair. Yeah. Oh, great. So, uh, so we'll we, see how that goes. We hired a guy with a boat. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Hey, you know what? This is a payback for that time I towed you out of the bush. I'm pretty oh, sure I towed him. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. I forgot all about that. Uh, Your popo. Yeah. yeah. The old popo. I haven't had that thing in oh, it's, it's been a it's long been a time. Years, man. Yeah. All right, so <laughs> he's going to walk up to where the drone is. I'm going to try and sneak around here and get to the other side. I don't know if this is going to work at all, but I don't know. It'd be nice to get it. At the end of the day, even if it's not, I could get the footage, and it wouldn't be terrible to uh, to get that out of the water anyway. I don't want to leave junk like that in the water if I can help it. 
Imagine we find it first shot. Poor Kyle, he felt so bad. The worst is, like, he's a really good drone pilot. Like, I don't fly it at all because I just, I don't have the knack for it. And that's okay. But he's put in the hours and he's learned it and he's done his license. And when it cuts signal, it cuts signal. It doesn't matter where it's at. So that sucks. Uh, the odds of finding this, man, that water's moving fast. good right I think I think I can see it it's in front of you look down holy geez I actually saw it from here ah he got it <laughs> what are the odds of that There's some over there. Uh, uh, we'll stop and get some Rice yeah, table. rice. You were standing there yeah. and it was like here. <laughs> you, so hot, you actually said, look straight down. Yeah. <laughs> Buy a Hyson from Rito Lakes Power yeah. Sports and they'll save your drones from water. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Hyson and, in the bumper bumper. and drone recovery <laughs> services. <laughs>